All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is one of Junior's friends. He called me up. Got an LS motor on here with a Holley system. You see it's a HP Holley back there. He's not real familiar with it. So he called me up and see if I could come over here and help him try to get this thing running a little bit. He's gonna tune it once he figures out how to work everything. So I'm gonna just work him through. He got it cranked up over the weekend and it's running a little rich. So I just gotta kind of point him in the right direction on how this thing works. Don't forget to go to turbojohnracing.com to grab yourself some merchandise, comment, like, and subscribe, and check this stuff out. This is awesome. So he's got this awesome motor in here on the dyno. This is a nice engine dyno. They've been in business for a long time. I've always heard of them, but I've never come up here and actually seen the shop. This is crazy. These engine dynos, man, th these things are just funky. The way they work is the water dyno. So I don't know how all that stuff works. It's got pressure and fins. I guess it's like a converter or something so it can load it. This is just a basic LS motor that he's done for a customer. And it's got some bells and whistles on it, but you can see it's, it's got a very nice intake on it. It's got the Holly fuel injection and he's done some tweaks on it here and there. But basically this is their test motor to get this thing sorted out and to see what they're gonna do more later on. All right, guys, this is Doug. He's one of the owners of H&F Performance. Um, this is the dyno cell. I've never been in a dyno cell before. Is that right? No, this is my first time. I'm excited. That's why he was like, can you come help me get this thing running a little bit? And I was like, sure, let's see it. You've had some stuff on the chassis dyno, I'm sure, that you? Yeah, chassis dyno. I hate chassis dynos. I always blow my stuff up on the chassis dyno. <laughs> What's the most horsepower you've made in here? Some blower stuff in here on alcohol. Right. We've actually had stuff coming around about 1,600 horsepower. Range. Wow, that's pretty good. How long have you had that dyno? Man, we've had the dyno here. Actually, the dyno itself, we've had this thing probably 35 years. 35 years, that's you know, we've crazy. We've made some changes. We put right. a lot of low control on it. We actually changed it. We first bought it as a go power dyno. Right. And we bought the uh, Stutzka load unit put on it. And, uh, we, bought, we bought it with a go power. All the main controls, no defect system. We bought the defect system and put on it. Uh, then we switched it over and added a computer to it. And then the last thing we added was actually an automatic load control. That's a pretty good deal. You know, this per, it's pretty cool, man. This is this is crazy. I can't wait to see how it works out, how it runs, and you got your controls over here. It's kind of like you're driving a boat. It yep, looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nobody tells you I'm left-handed, so that's what I said it is. Right. Oh, I got you. That's that's right. That's cool deal. All right, cool deal. Let's crank this thing up and see what right. we got. And we'll look at the tune. He's got the holly over here. And so we're going to mess with it and just see what happens. You don't have all a lot of the ton of these gauges hooked up. I mean, oil pressure, um, all that stuff is over on his other cell. All right, let's fiddle with this a little bit. We're going to just try to tweak it some and see if we can get it to idle just a little bit better. Just been pecking over here at this thing. And I'm not a tuner, like I said, but we're just trying to get this thing, get it so that idle's halfway decent and it'll rev up and maybe make some, he might make some pulls on it today. But we done, I do a very basic like air fuel. I mean, there's a lot of people that this is all, you know, trimmed out. It's a different number over here versus over here. And it's, it's very gradual. But usually I just do it based on RPM. It 
does a little bit of feathering over here, which this is always good. Um, a lot of people do it in volumetric efficiency, but I mean, those numbers, you know, are pretty good, I guess. I always like to tune in pounds per hour myself personally. running in these cells in order to make these changes and we can we'll be able to look at it and see see these go down you see any numbers that are crazy out of whack then you know you've got a pretty good idea you need to make some changes he's got the throttle band plate open a little bit so he's going to idle it down once it's at idle i think it's at about 900 what his goal is. You know, like I said, I'm not a professional tuner. And that's why my fuel maps and spark maps look kind of fun. But, you know, we can get it running halfway decent and he can do uh, either hire a professional tuner or get someone to, you know, do the finalized stuff. 3,500, 4,000 RPM. our learn table popping up what it was just doing what we commanded so he put it up loaded it and you see it was barely adding fuel up here so it's actually pretty close on the on the fuel inside up there To the acceleration table a minute ago guys and that's right here and i added about eight percent of fuel and it had a little bit of a hesitation and that seems to be a lot better Well, that's going to do it. He's got the base tune on it. He's got a few little odds and end things to do. Done a few little short loaded pulls to get the fuel table right. Looks like it's going to be close. He'll be doing a few things to it and he'll be making a full pull on it soon. All right, guys, y'all comment, like, and subscribe. See y'all soon later.